good morning students today we begin with the essay titled macrain in hertfordshire in the last class we discussed the life and career of charles lamb hope it is clear we discussed his character about his essays the style of his essays so it will be more clear when you start reading these three essays there are three essays prescribed for in the in your syllabus one is macrae and in hertfordshire the other one is a dissertation upon roast pig third one oxford in the vacation so i'll share the pdf of these three essays so before listening to this lecture please stop here and please read uh, at least four or five paragraphs of macrae and in hertfordshire and then come back to this lecture i will not be giving out a line by line explanation of the essay so please read the essay and come back to this lecture i hope you have read this essay so in the first paragraph he is talking about charles lamb is talking about his relationship with his sister bridget alia so here in this essay mary lamb his real sister is named as bridget alia and also she is presented as the housekeeper not as his sister so in the beginning itself we understand that he is actually talking about his sister though actually he is talking about his sister he present his sister in a different thing and in the first paragraph he is talking about an atmosphere of harmony an atmosphere of mutual sympathy that exists between them so he begins like this bridget alia has been my housekeeper for many a long year i have obligations to bridget extending beyond the period of memory we house together old bachelor and maid in a sort of double singleness with such tolerable comfort upon the whole that i for one find in myself no sort of disposition to go out upon the mountains with the rash kings of spring to bewail my celibacy so in my first lecture i told you about his love for using all those allusions all those biblical references charles lamb and bridget alia they were living together for many years and they lived together in a kind of double singleness so they are different double singleness it means they are different yet together and they charles lamb called themselves old bachelor and maid you know the history their life history they they couldn't get married and he says that even though they are living together as old bachelor and maid they experienced a feeling of comfort and at no point of time he felt the need to lament about his celibacy here he brings in an allusion this is the reference to the daughter of jephtha jephtha was actually a judge of israel and when he went out for a war he made a rash promise a rash promise that he will sacrifice the first thing which came out of his house to meet him when he returned home victorious so he promised that when he become victorious in a certain battle he will sacrifice the first thing which comes out of his house he thought his favorite dog will come out of his house but unfortunately his holy daughter came out of the house and this poor woman this poor girl 
who was not yet married, it is said that she went up to the mountains crying that she is still virgin and she wanted to live and to get married. So he says that he will not act like that offspring of that rash king who lamented about her celibacy. He says that he felt no need to lament about his celibacy because they were so happy together. They felt such comfort with each other. And along with that, he says that Charles Lamb and Bridget Aria agreed pretty well in almost all taste and habits. Though there, are, there were many differences, he say, says that with our difference, it is in double quotes. Though they had different tastes and habits, they agreed pretty well with each other. And on the whole, two of them, most of the time they were in harmony, though there were occasional bickerings, occasional quarrels between them, as it is seen in any other siblings. It is true, right? Even in our case, we quarrel with our siblings, though we have a general harmony between each other. And he also notes another interesting fact in their relationship. He says that they have never expressed any sympathy in each other in words. He says that the sympathies are rather understood than expressed. They need not express their sympathies. It is rather understood. They express their sympathies silently. And he talks about an interesting incident once happened. He says that once he tried to express his sympathy and when at the moment he expressed his sympathy, she started crying. Bridget Alias started crying because she had not anticipated a change in her brother. She said, she said that he altered. So that was not common among in, the, in their relationship. They were not expected to express their feeling of sympathy with each other because it was understood that each felt sympathetic to each other. That is why they lived together. Old, even as old bachelor and maid, they felt a comfort with each other, a kind of tolerable comfort. So that is the first paragraph. Now, in the second paragraph, he talks about their reading habits. Charles Lamb and his sister, Bridget Alien, they are both great readers, but they read different books. Lamb got interested in the works of Burton, that is actually Richard Burton, uh, sorry, Robert Burton, who is the author of The Anatomy of Melancholy. And he says that he reads again and again certain passages in the works of Burton. And he got, he is so attracted to the works of the contemporary of Burton. While Bridget Alia reads some modern tales of adventure and at some point Lamb gets so irritated at the kind of stories Bridget is interested. He says that Bridget is interested in all those modern tales, modern tales of adventures she, and she needed only a story. He says that she must have a story. I quote, she must have a story 
well, ill or indifferently told, so there be life stirring in it and plenty of good or evil accidents. The fluctuations of fortune in fiction and almost in real life have ceased to interest or operate but dully upon me. So she must have a story. There should be a plot. It can be a good one, well written, bad, whatever. She needs a plot, a story. It will be something like an adventurous story, something like a fairy tale, something like a happily lived ever after kind of stories. She needs stories. But Charles Lamb says, narrative teases me. I completely dislike narrative stories. While Bridget had a native disrelish of anything that sound odd or bizarre. He was interested in all those out-of-the-way humors and all those odd authorships. He did not like the famous ones, but all those odd authors and out-of-the-way humors. That kind of works generated interest in Charles Lamb, while Bridget Elia likes something exciting or sensational. Lamb did not have any kind of interest in all those fluctuations of fortune. Something like a crisis and then there is a sudden fluctuation of fortune and then there is this end of happily lived ever after. He was not at all interested in that kind of stories. He was interested in reading about all those out of the way humors and opinions. He is interested in all those oddities of authorship. Why, as I said earlier, Bridget had this native disrelish, dislike for all those works which were odd or bizarre. And according to her, nature was more clever. She believes that nature is more clever than man. And he ends by saying that I can actually forgive her for all those dislike, for all her dislike for my kind of words, but I will not forgive her for ridiculing Margaret Newcastle. So Lamb had a great admiration for Margaret Newcastle. So who was this Margaret Newcastle? Margaret Newcastle was actually Margaret Cavendish. She was a Duchess of Newcastle and was the author of many books during that time. She wrote many poems, many philosophical works. She wrote her autobiography and also the biography of her husband, Duke of Newcastle. And Lamb had a great appreciation, a high opinion on her mental caliber, her intelligence. But Bridget always ridiculed this particular author. And Lamb concludes this essay by saying that she must apologize to me for the certain disrespectful respectful insinuations which she has been pleased to throw on Margaret Newcastle. So, she, he ends this essay by saying that I forgive her for all those odd taste, odd literary taste, but she must apologize to me for disrespecting this particular author, Margaret Newcastle, for whom I have great respect. So here is the second paragraph. So in the second paragraph, they are, he is particularly talking about the differences in their literary and reading, literary taste and reading habits. Hope it is clear. Now we move to the next paragraph. Here he continues narrating the different characters and temperaments of these two people. One is himself, Charles Lamb, and the other one, it is his sister, Bridget. 
He says that, he continues, it has been, I quote, it has been the lot of my cousin, oftener perhaps that I could have wished to have had for associates and mine, free thinkers, leaders and disciples of novel philosophies and systems, but she neither wrangles with nor accept their opinions. That which was good and venerable to her when a child retains its authority over her mind still. She never juggles or plays trick with her understanding. So, he says that they had associations with lot of free thinkers, lot of leaders, lot of disciples of novel or original new philosophical systems. But they had a rich circle of these people with them. But Brigitania never accepted the opinions of these people. She had certain ideas in her mind which she imbibed in her childhood. She continued to cling on to that ideas and opinions which she imbibed during her childhood. All these people, though they had this lot of social intercourse, they, she never accepted their ideas or opinions. She considered the ideas and opinions she got during the childhood as something which is permanent, which was permanent and she was never ready to change that. So that was one of her character. And then he talks about another one, another situation. He says that they were too inclined to be emphatic on certain opinions and views. And when there was a dispute, so there were two kinds of dispute between them. He says that if the dispute was where all those matters related to facts, dates and circumstances, I always won. So if it was matters related to facts, dates and circumstances, Charles Lamb won that dispute. When it was matters related to moral, like something like whether it is right or wrong, such kind of disputes, in that kind of disputes, when all those moral points were concerned or where there is a question that what should be done and what should be avoided, what is right, what is wrong. Bridget was right and Lamb has always had to bow to Bridget's view. So there Bridget won all those disputes related to moral matters. And in the next paragraph, he talks about an absurd behavior, a really absurd behavior of Bridget. He says that, I must touch upon the foibles of my kinswoman with a gentle hand, for Bridget does not like to be told of her faults. She hath an awkward trick of reading in company. So, as any other woman, she also did not like to be told of her faults. But he says that I need to talk about a certain fault which is, which is so glaring. One of her faults is that she reads even when there are visitors in the house. So please imagine that, that there are a lot of visitors in your house and you take a book and go and sit in the middle and start reading. So how absurd is that? Bridget used to do that. And Along with that, if someone asked her a question, 
she will just answer yes or no without even fully understanding the question and please imagine that situation it will be so offensive to the putter of the question or the asker of that question and along with that he also talks about another nature of bridget elia he says that bridget never loses her presence of mind in all those difficult situations so they have gone through great trials and tribulations in their life and she stood steady in all those difficult situations but strange fact is that she becomes nervous in all those ordinary situations which need not have such presence of mind she behaved so oddly so strangely and also when with regard to all those great things she can speak wisely but when there are all those silly matters she generally says something which is considered to be very foolish so that is the nature of bridget so here in this paragraph in two three paragraphs he talks about the different nature and temperaments of charles lamb and bridget elia so here i stop if you haven't read the essay please read the essay and listen to this lecture once more hope it is clear thank you girls have a nice day